Hey everyone, let's continue with section 2.3 where we talk about the current going through the LED and the resistors and what they are. And the main sort of gist of this lesson is going to be ways we can prevent our LED from exploding because, I mean, who wants their LED to explode, right? So I'm first going to start off with some slides. Um, there's going to be a good amount, so now might be a good time to take notes. But then from there, we're going to start um, wiring in some new components to see if we can prevent our LED from exploding. All right, so let's get started. So let's first start with the issue that we looked at in the previous video towards the end. So with the 9 volt battery, right, which is the battery that we're going to be using from now on to uh, power up our LED, we got this error message. The current through the LED is 915 MA, while the absolute maximum is 20 MA. So what we're going to do is sort of, you know, figure out what this message is actually saying. And we're going to go through it bit by bit. And eventually, once we understand what this message is saying, we're going to see how we can fix basically what's happening. So there's this number, which is has a unit of measure, um, MA, which is milliamps. We're going to talk about that in a second. So there's this number that's in MA that is too high for the LED to properly handle. And somehow we need to get the 915 MA to be less than or equal to 20 MA. Because if you see in our error message, the maximum possible MA that can go through the circuit is 20. But right now we have 915 going through the LED, which is really bad. And we need to somehow get this to be less than or equal to 20. So let's uh, backtrack a little bit. So remember this diagram that we talked about on current flow where current goes from the positive end of the battery through, through the anode and then goes down into the negative end of the battery from the cathode, remember that? Well, this was electric current, right? And we said before that electric current is the flow of charged particles. So what's flowing from the battery through the circuit? It's these charged particles. And the ampere, or amp for short, is a unit of the measure for how electric is for electric current, basically. It's a unit of measure for electric current. And if you want another way of thinking about it, it measures how fast those charged particles are moving. So once again, we have this current flowing through the LED, and then we have a way of measuring how fast that current is flowing, which is called the amp. So we've got this unit of measure, right? So let's re-explain the problem a little bit. The LED flowing through the current, or sorry, the current flowing through the LED is too high. 915 milliamps is equal to 0 0.915 amps. So this is just a unit conversion from the metric scale. Now, if you're, you know, a little bit shaky on your metric scale, you're not quite sure what that is, I highly recommend uh, just, you know, doing a quick Google search of the metric scale and you'll see how I got to 0 0.915 amps. So basically we have too much current, which again is measured in amps, or in this case, well, Tinkercad is showing it to us in milliamps, um, but the current in amps is too high right now. So the current going through the LED is too high. So well, what do we do? Well, we somehow need something that we can add to our circuit that can reduce the current flowing through the LED. So reduce the current coming in from the battery. So what is that thing? Well, it's called the resistor. Now, there's a bunch of different ways of thinking about it, but this is probably my favorite. So the resistor is a fancy piece of wire that absorbs current from the circuit. And if you want a little bit more of an explanation on how it's basically taking away the current or rather absorbing it, um, we absorb the electrical energy, which is then dissipated by heat. But note that there are a lot of different ways that you can absorb and dissipate heat. And there's a bunch of different ways that this could be done. Um, if you're really curious more about how the resistor works, um, there are a lot of different um, pieces of documentation that you could look up online and a bunch of different papers that you could read that give you more information about the resistor. But in the context of application and working with circuits, all you really need to know is that it's a fancy piece of wire that absorbs current from uh, the power source in your circuit. 
but how do we know how much current, right? Because remember, we needed to go from 915 amps to 20 amp, or sorry, 915 milliamps to 20 amps, so 20 milliamps. So how do we know what kind of, you know, resistor that we need in order to get from that number 915 to 20? Well, that depends on the resistance of the resistor. So resistance is a measure of how, of the opposition to current flow. Basically, how much current is resisted? How much current is this resistor absorbing from your power source? Now, resistance is another unit of measure. So in the way that um, Ampere measures current, resistance measures resistors. So resistors or resistance is measured in ohms. Kind of like how distance is measured in either miles or kilometers, resistance is measured in ohms. And resistors are classified based on their resistance. So let's just, um, and actually before I get to that, here's a fun fact. Um, there are different kinds of resistors, right? Because resistors are classified based on their resistance, right? So different resistors can have different resistances or you know different ohms that they resist and so the color of these lines these four lines that you see here the color will actually tell you the resistance of the resistor now usually when you're working in like with a physical um set of circuitry um you usually have a whole bunch of resistors in one pack and that pack is usually labeled like, so, for example, and by the way, resistors are labeled by the amount of ohms um, or basically they're classified by their resistance. So, for example, if I have a 100 ohm resistor, I would have a pack with just 100 ohm resistors and that pack would be labeled 100 ohms. And so that's how I know that, OK, I have 100 ohm resistors here. I have 220, you know, 330, 450, etc. You don't really need to know the color scheme because the packs tend to be labeled. But if you've just got a random resistor lying around and, you know, you're wondering, hey, well, how do I know what resistance this is? Well, you can actually look up, a, you can find on Google a color scheme or a chart that describes a color scheme and sort of calculate the resistance, which I think is pretty cool. So here's what we know. We know the LED's allowable current, right? It was 20 milliamps. We can resist this current that's coming from the battery, right? So the battery is giving too much current but we have a way of reducing it. But here's the last thing we need to know. Why, what, um, by what amount do we need to resist the current? In other words, what kind of resistor do we need? And this is where we get into some math. So there is a rule or a law rather called Ohm's law, which basically says that there is a mathematical relationship between voltage Right, so remember we're working with a nine volt battery, right? So the voltage comes from our battery. The current, which we know already because, right, um, Tinkercad told us 20 milliamps was the max. So current, which is uh, usually is represented by the variable I, which is the flow of electrons or charged particles. And then resistance, which is uh, abbreviated with R, which comes from our resistor. So we have this math principle here, uh, V equals IR. It's this equation. Now, remember, we know V, right? We know not, V equals 9, right? Because our battery is 9 volts. We also know I because, well, Tinkercad told us what I is. It's 20 milliamps, right? Because that's the amount that the LED can possibly tolerate. That's the maximum amount. And we also know R, the resistance. Well, we don't know it quite yet, but we know V and I. So we can use V and I to calculate R, right? We just uh, need to divide both sides of this equation by I, and R is becomes equal to V divided by I. So let's do exactly that. We know the following, right? V is equal to nine volts. I is equal to 0 0.02 amps. Again, this was the 20 milliamps that Tinkercad gave us. I just converted this to 0 0.02 amps. And we need to find R. So we have nine is equal to 0 0.02 R. When you divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.02, you get nine divided by 0 0.02, which is equal to 450. So our R, our resistance, the resistor that we need is a 450 amp resistor. Isn't that cool? So what we're going to do now is actually just wire this up and well, see what happens, see the improvement.
let's go ahead. So I'm going to go over to my Tinkercad dashboard. Um, here's my 2.1, um, <clears throat> 2.2 circuit. I'm going to go ahead and create a circuit. And for classification purposes, let's call this a 2.3 circuit. And let's first grab our nine volt battery. Once again, I'm gonna change components to all. Let's get the battery going. Let's flip the battery. Oh, yeah, I want, I want it that way. I wanna mirror it. I want it like this. And then we want our LED. So I'm gonna search for LED and there we go. Now, remember how current flows from the positive end of the battery to the negative end of the battery? Well, what we're going to do is add the resistor at the first place that will encounter the LED will encounter current. So if LED, let me just connect the wires here real quick, one second, just so I can sort of explain this in a better way. So if LED flows, oops, that's a little too big. If LED flows from this, let's get the smaller. Okay, cool. If LED flows from this positive end to the anode and then from the cathode to the negative end, I wanna resist the uh, current going to the LED at the first moment, right? So if it's going in this direction, right? Sort of this way, right? It's going from starting from the positive end going to the negative end, right? It makes the most sense to add the resistor at the anode, right? Because that is the first place that the LED will encounter the current from the battery. And so let's get rid of these two wires here. And let's add the resistor in. Now remember, the resistor is just a fancy piece of wire, right? So let's find resistor. Oh, did not mean to do that. Uh, all right, resistor. Now it's just a fancy piece of wire. So it works exactly like a piece of wire. I'm just gonna directly connect this like that. Now notice when I click this, right? I have the ability to change my resistor. Now here you can kind of see the metric scale and the different um, ohm ratings of resistors. We're gonna stick with default ohms for now since remember we calculated the number of ohms, right? It was 450 right here. So we're going to set this resistance to 450. Now everything else actually remains the same, right? We're gonna connect um, our final piece of wire to fully connect the um, anode to the positive end of the battery. I'm gonna change this to red. And then we're going to do the negative end of the battery. And again, this side did not need a resistor because you only need one resistor at the moment, at the first moment, your LED will encounter current. Because current flows from positive end to negative end, we know that the first moment the LED will encounter current is at the anode. So I'm gonna change this to blue because, um, actually, let, yeah, let's change this to blue because I, I like that color better. Now I'm just gonna turn this on and start simulation. And look at that. With a nine volt battery, we're able to get this LED to turn on. Now I wanna show you the differences, right, in between the circuits we made before and this circuit we have right now. And so the first difference that I wanna show you is between a nine volt battery with our resistor, which is what we already have, versus a nine volt battery without the resistor, right? So let's wire that up real quick. So I have a nine volt battery here. Let's flip this around. I'm gonna grab an LED. Got this here. And then I'm gonna change this to blue. Just drag the wires in, make this red. And I'm going to make this black. Okay, now let's turn this on. And we see that this LED ends up exploding, right? The current is too high, so we can't get it at peak brightness. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you before we end is our very original circuit, which was with the 1.5 volt battery. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong buttons here. No, let me search, thank you. Battery, 1.5 volt battery. We're going to get our LED. Oh, wow, it does not like you highlighting text for some reason. Good to know. All right, so we're gonna change this to blue so we have a constant comparison. I'm gonna move this a little bit. Actually, no, I want this at the same height just so it's easier to see. Anode to positive, we're gonna change that to red. And then cathode to negative, we're gonna change that to black. 
Now here is where the comparison starts to become more clear. Notice how much dimmer this LED is compared to this one. Because at one point, remember our relationship, V equals IR? Well, V isn't that high to begin with. So because V isn't that high to begin with, the amount of current going through the LED is automatically reduced, right? So what ends up happening is this LED doesn't have that much current flowing through it to begin with. So it's not going to be as bright. But this LED has the maximum allowable current flowing through it at 20 milliamps. So it's going to be as bright as possible. So remember, it's current, resistance, and voltage that work together to give you the maximum number, amount of brightness. When we resist the current appropriately and send the proper amount of current through the LED, we prevent it from exploding. When we use a high enough voltage battery pack, which gives us the amount of current to achieve maximum current, then we get the LED at its brightest possible state. So that is the power of using a high voltage battery with a resistor to allow you to safely operate your components. So I hope you found that cool. I hope this all made sense. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next section.